So now let's talk lenses. Focal length and lens choice is really something that we dive into to really make your talking video, interview videos, and any other kind of videos really look a lot more professional. So one of the first questions you might have when shooting is whether you should use a zoom lens or a prime lens. That's a great question because there are a few key benefits and drawbacks to each type of lens. If we start off here with the prime 50 millimeter 1.4, we can see is a very shallow depth of field. Our subject is razor sharp and the background is very blurry. The downside to this is that there's no zoom function. You can't move from a 50 mil to 70 mil. You have to actually physically move your body and your camera closer and further to what you're shooting. Now the trade-off is that you're giving away that ability to get multiple shot types with one lens for the great looking shallow depth of field, which looks really cinematic and creates kind of a one pointed focus. Whatever is in focus on camera, the viewer's eye fixates on and whatever is out of focus with the prime lens kind of falls off into the background. And this really just allows for you to also get a much larger maximum aperture, which lets more light into the lens and allows for you to shoot in different scenarios with much lower available light. Now we're shooting on a 24 to 105 at 4.0. So without having to move, we can get a wide shot, we can get a close up, we can get a medium shot, all very quickly and easily. So we're getting multiple focal lengths and multiple different framings with one single lens. So with this 24 mil at 4.0, and this 50 mil at 1.4, you can see a huge difference. With the 50 mil, we see the subject very sharp. We see a very cinematic looking image of our subject. And on the 24 mil, it feels much more of a behind the scenes, kind of less produced, less professional shot because so much of the frame is in focus. But as I'm shooting the behind the scenes here, I can very quickly shoot a wide shot, zoom in and shoot a close up of just the camera and easily choose different types of framing. Now with this next setup, Luis is deciding to throw on the 17 to 40 millimeter 4.0. It's a super wide angle lens that he strategically chose for this very dramatic setting where we have the subject walking through this large doorway and we really get a feel for the scale and size of what's in our image. Compared to the 24 to 70 that I'm shooting in on, it's not nearly as dramatic and we're seeing a lot more of the majority of the image in focus. So we're clearly seeing the subject and where she is in the location. So the takeaway here is that as a video creator, you're using your tools to change the way that the viewer is feeling. And you don't need a whole lot of lenses. If you have maybe two lenses and even on smartphones, and they now have a wide angle function and a telephoto function, you can mix and use all of these different techniques together to create something that feels more professional or adventurous or action oriented. So now I wanna to touch on framing. If you've noticed for pretty much all of these shots, we're framing the subject's eyes on the upper third of the screen. This technique is known as the rule of thirds. There's these imaginary intersecting lines that intersect at four different points on your screen. Now, if you place important parts of your image on those intersecting lines, it's a pretty good chance that you're gonna get a good looking, aesthetically pleasing image. This is a great guideline and a framework to follow as a video creator, but we wanna learn these rules so that we can use them properly, but then also be able to consciously break them for a desired effect. Now I wanna talk about one of the most important parts of creating a video, which is getting coverage. These techniques that we've touched on help you to get shots looking a certain way, but really getting multiple angles, shooting the same action in multiple different ways, and getting as many usable shots as possible is key to having enough ingredients to work with when you get to the post-production phase. So let's take a look at what the shots Luis has shot so far would look like in a montage. <laughs>
So if everything was on a tripod with no movement, it would be a pretty boring video. So the goal here, like I mentioned, is really to enhance what's in front of the camera. If you're shooting a talking shot on an iPhone with a tripod and it's just you standing in front of the camera, what kind of lighting and background can you use to make that more uniquely yours? If you're shooting a high-end fashion video, what kind of camera movement and framing can you use to make your average looking shots really stand out? Even like choosing your background properly. It can be just as important as the subject or the main focus of your image because it's also changing the way that we perceive what is on camera. Two different shots, same subject and outfit, same movement, different backgrounds, different experience. And when we're using these things, we're making sure to shoot multiple takes and multiple angles. This is gonna help you carve your story later on in the editing process. The more coverage you have, the more of a story you can tell. And for this kind of example that I'm doing is creating a lead in shot with movement. You see, we're not really framing anything on the thirds. There's no special rules that we're following here, but we're moving the subject into frame. And this gives us kind of a cool intro into a shot. It's also giving us more to work with in our edit. Little things like this really add more options for us later on and allow those extra little moments that you have recorded to create a more dynamic video. And that wraps it up for our mini onset crash course experience. Not good lighting, good lighting. Not good lighting, good lighting. <laughs> Uh, if you like that tutorial, you can check out my cinematography masterclass where I go even deeper into these techniques, principles, and takeaways. So you can click that link to check out the trailer. And if it looks like something that you like or interested, if it looks like something you're interested in, you can hit the enroll button and join the team. Check it out.